Hello everyone, today I have a special review for you. Um, I ordered it from lego.com, it took a couple days to arrive, and as you can see the box is empty, but this is just a shipping box, but let's go take a look at the real thing right now. And here it is, the Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell. I am so excited to review this set, and let's go ahead and unbox it. When you open the side of the box, we will be, gre gre uh, we will be greeted by some artwork of the Forging of the Rings and of Isildur and Sauron there. And then inside, we have quite a lot of bags. I'm going to go ahead and find some bread to pour, pour all these out, and then I'll get back to you. Also, we have a little bit of nice artwork there. So inside, we have a bunch of bags and this box here, and this should be the rest of our pieces, so we're going to go ahead and open that up. Inside that box, we are greeted with a bunch of bags. Also, the total bags here, there are 49 number bags, so that is great. And inside here, we have our instruction manuals and our sticker sheet. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this open here. Take a look at that. I'll get back to you. Inside, we have two sticker sheets and one, two, three pretty sizable instruction books. Inside the first one, it should be a write-up about Rivendell. You can pause and read. Well, you can pause and read that if you would like. If you didn't, if you couldn't get it, then that's also on Lego.com. And then we have some more history of Lord of the Rings sets. We have Mines of Moria, Helm's Deep, all good stuff. And then it goes into the regular building experience with some facts, and we have some other stuff like that in these instruction booklets with some of our mini figures in here. And I think it is time to get a move on in this set. Our first minifigure up is Old Man Bilbo Baggins, and I think this is just a great minifigure all around. He has a not new, but it is a unique element for his legs here. They are dual molded with tan on bottom, well, no, tan on top, and like, um, I don't like flesh, fleshy skin tone. And this, these legs actually appeared on Dobby back in 2021. And if you don't believe me, um, I'll just pull them over to show you. I actually can't find them, so we're just gonna go on. But anyway, the rest of this minifigure is exclusive, minus the hairpiece and his walking stick. He has this, uh, of course, his walking stick that he uses, and we can see he has nice torso print on the back, and he has some nice torso print on the front, that looks nice, and then he has white sleeves, that looks nice, and he uses the Doc Brown face, and he has this nice calm expression, um, I'm pretty sure this is a unique print for this set, and if you flip that around, though, you can actually see the face when he wants the ring. So I think that is quite a great inclusion. I'm so glad. And also, I don't think I've mentioned this before. This is our first ever Bilbo Baggins, like old man Bilbo Baggins in a Lego set. So like they did not do this for the original Lord of the Rings wave. So I'm glad that we're finally getting him. And I think this minifigure is perfect from top to bottom. Another minifigure that is perfect top to bottom is Frodo Baggins. We can see in his hand he has the one ring, and that is this nice drum lacquer gold, or I think that might actually be chrome gold, I can't remember, but it is a nice gold color there. He has a new, th his legs are actually new and exclusive to the set. They are dual molded brown and um, fleshy skin color, and you'll see that all the, hab the hobbits have this, and they actually have a way to sit down, but I'll come to that later in the video. He has a new torso print, which you can flip it around, and he has this nice green cape here that is nice. We can flip that cape around, and you can see some nice back printing there for Frodo. That looks pretty nice. Flipping that cape back around, we can see that Frodo has a nice calm expression here with this Hobbit hairpiece that they introduced back in 2012 or 2013 for Hobbits, because they all have curly hair. And, um, yeah, turning that face around, we can see the face when Frodo is possessed by the ring, and I think it just looks spectacular. I do actually have some of the old Lord of the Rings minifigures, including Frodo, so I will compare the ones I have with the new version, so we're just going to go ahead and do that right now. Here's the Frodo from the Cap from the Council of Elrond set back in, I think, like 2012 or 2013. I can't remember which year, but you can see that the details are pretty much the same, except even just looking at the hair pieces, like, it's not as shiny as the old one was, and just the faces, like... I mean, this this one, I mean, they did have faces back in the day with, uh, with like, the possessed look, but this minifigure did not have that. But the ones that did have it, I feel like they just, over, they just like, overdid it, and I think that they ha had the right amount on this one. And you can even just look at the torso prints, like, this one looks, like, really rugged, and this one is just more refined and clean. And even with the legs, you can see, like, like, of course, hobbits, they don't wear shoes, so 
it was very accurate to give him dual molded legs, so I'm very thankful for that. And overall, I think we can just say that 2020, uh, 2023 is the winner here. Our next minifigure is Gandalf the Grey. He is a great one to have in your collection, and the old ones, they're pretty cheap because he came in quite a lot of sets and even a little poly bag. So, yeah, like maybe like 10 max for the old one. So, Gandalf's definitely not a minifigure to buy this set for, but that's not to say he isn't a bad minifigure. Let's look at him. Looking, he has this new dress element with printing on it of his bag and more of his belt coming down. We did not get any printing on the legs of the last one. I'm pretty sure they were all just regular gray pants. And then on the back here, we have printing on the back of the dress element as long as back torso printing for his hood, and he has more torso printing. I'll show that in a second. He is the only minifigure in this set with a spongy cape. The other five minifigures with capes are all the the harder cloth, I guess you would say. And this is just the spongy cape, and that is because it has the dress element here, and if they did the hard one, then it would hurt that, and it would bend the cape and ruin it. So I'm particularly not a fan of the spongy capes. I really prefer the harder ones, in my opinion, I just gotta say. But, yeah, I gotta say, for this, I think they probably did have to give him the spongy one just for that. But other than that, I don't think he really could have done anything else. He has the same hat piece. I'm pretty sure it's the same. I, I would, I doubt that they would change the mold for this of how perfect it is. But that is the same hat piece. And underneath, we have this face, but it is not a f new, new face. It is a reused face from, I think, Harry Potter. But, yeah, just cutting costs like that, I gotta say, I really don't like that. Like, whenever you took off the old Gandalf head, which I actually have the old Gandalf minifigure in a second, so I'll show that. But when you took it off, you could tell it was Gandalf. But with this, you can't tell it's Gandalf until you add the beard. Like, I gotta say, with the beard, that looks great. But with but without the beard, it does not look good. Now, something else I have is his hairpiece, and they included this in this set and i think that looks great and yeah nothing to complain there if we remove his head and beard elements we can see some nice torso printing there with the tie piece for his cloak and putting everything back we can see our minifigure fully together now i'm going to take a second and look at the old 2013 gandalf looking at the two gandalf side by side the torso printings are, are pretty much the same and i'm pretty sure the beard elements are the same and Overall, I think the one thing that the old Gandalf had better than this one, well, actually, the two things are the cape and the head. Because as I, as you can see, whenever you take off the head, you can just you can just automatically tell, like you can just yeah, you can just see this is Gandalf. And I gotta say, I love that about this minifigure. Like you can just and like his eyebrows though, just how bushy they are. Like that, I I love that about this figure. And I gotta say, like this minifigure. It may not be as good as the new version. Like, I gotta say, the one thing I really don't like is that head. Although, they did have to cut some costs in some places to give us some pretty other good minifigures. But, I must say, the old Gandalf, if you get that instead of buying this set with that Gandalf, you would not be disappointed. It's really, in my way, it's pretty much the same fig. It's just, like, really, Gandalf in here is just really not too much upgraded. Our next minifigure is Samwise Gamgee. He has the same Lego element that Frodo uses. He has a nice torso print there with his overalls. He has his trusty frying pan, and he has a light blue cape here. And we can lift that up to see a nice torso print on his backside. Looking at the front of him, we can see a nice stern expression. I don't know when he really used this expression, except maybe at like in like Mordor fighting off Smeagol. But I guess that's really for the Barador set. <laughs> but... Yeah, so he has a, so what's what's interesting is he and uh, Mary, uh, Lego released them back in 2013, I think. I do not have either of those figures, but if you notice, they actually swapped the hair pieces from back in the day. I think that that neither were accurate for Sam, but I think the newer version is better for Mary, which I'll get into that in a, in a minute. But I think that this is just great for Sam. Looking at it, he has this face, and then on the other side, he has this this like laughing expression, like looking happy and grinning. And I think that this is just a, a top-notch fig overall. Here is Mary, and as I said, they switched the hair pieces for him and Sam from back in the day, and I, I rewatched all the Lord of the Rings trilogy before reviewing this set, so I would have a fresh view on the content of this, and I gotta say, I think this hair choice is actually better for Mary, but I do not think it is better for Sam, but I do think this is a good, accurate hair piece for Mary here. 
looking at it, he ha his accessory is a broken carrot, and that is, of course, whenever he they're tumbling down the hill and they get caught into the onto the adventure, and they and they he falls down and breaks his carrot. I think that's hilarious that they included it here. And looking at it, we can see he has a nice new torso print, and that looks nice. We can see some shiny, some metallicness there. He has his nice coat. He has this uh like light green coat. The uh, thing. I don't know, whatever it's called, I can't remember. But uh, he has a nice back printing here. And taking this down, we can see he has a nice grin here. And and taking off his hair piece and flipping it around, we can see he has a nice little smile here. I think this, this head piece is a reuse, but honestly, it works for Mary, so I'm fine with it. Our next minifigure is Pippin, and he looks pretty good. I gotta say, he really does. He has Lambda Spread as his accessory, and there are more of this in this set, and we'll actually take a look at that in a minute. But looking at him, he has that, and if you, and looking at his torso, when this set first released, it was exclusive. But it is no longer exclusive at this point. They have used it in a Harry Potter set for one other minifig, but now it's this torso is actually also coming in a GWP, so that is not good. So, like, whenever this set released in 2023, this was an exclusive torso for Pippin. But now, it is no longer. And I gotta say, I do not like that at all. And if you wanted, you could just buy this torso off LEGO.com. But, yeah, I gotta say, I don't like that at all. But it is what it is. Looking at the rest of him, though, we can see he has a nice brown cape. And lifting it up, we can see some nice back printing with his scarf. And he has a nice brown hair. I think this is accurate for Pippin. Pippin. And he has a nice smile on this side, and then he has like a like a scared expression with it, like a nice toothy smile. And that is very classic for Pippin. I think both sides are really capture his magic, and I love it. Our next minifigure is Aragorn, and he is great. Looking at him, he has a new sword element, which there is a weapons pack introduced in this set. I'll show you all of them later up, and uh, some of the minifigures actually have some of them, but we'll show you that in, later in the video. And it is a nice, accurate sword to what he wields in fellowship of the ring and i think i love it we have this nice classic hair piece has been used for a lot of sets i'm pretty sure this is the same one from back in the day and i actually have that figure here so we'll review them and he has a nice uh stubble and beard and he has like a like a frown angry look and then on this deck this nice smile he has a very accurate torso and leg printing for what he wears in rivendell now i actually have the old minifigure with me so looking at them we can see that it's basically the same figure. Like, as I can see, the hair is pretty much the same. The heads are pretty much the same. Just, this one's just more refined, in my opinion. But the one thing is, like, the outfits, they are not accurate at all. Although, to be fair, the, this minifigure never appeared in a Rivendell set. But it is the Aragorn that we got, except for one other. But, yeah, we got this Aragorn for everything. So, yeah. But for Rivendell, it is not accurate for what he wears. But... It was a good Aragorn. I just think this one's just quite a better look. Our next minifigure is Arwen, and I gotta say, she does not look that good. Looking at her, she has a book here, and inside is a print, and that is actually from Harry Potter, so that's quite interesting. But it is a black book that she reads, and of course drops when, and when Aragorn has his vision. And from, like, the torso print is amazing, the dress print is amazing, we have a little bit of printing there on the back, if we lift up this new head piece, which I'll talk about in a second, we can see some more printing there, and the head does not work for her at all, I really think that if they're, like, they just used, oh, my bad, hold on, in my opinion, if they're gonna use a generic face, which neither face looks like Arwen at all, then there's a different face they should use. Now let me let me go back onto that in a second. This new hairpiece. They tried to get they made two different elements. It's the same element just in uh, brown and and blonde. So they used the same piece for both men and women. And for some people, I think it looks good. For Arwen and Elrond, it looks good. Well, a little less for Elrond, but still Elrond. But I think they look work for him, but Legolas, it does not work well, but we'll get into that in a couple minifigures down, so let me just show you this. In my opinion, if they're just going to use a generic face, they should have used the generic face they used for Padme, because neither are really that accurate, but the Padme face is probably the more accurate, it just, in my opinion, it's just more accurate to what we see in the movies, so I don't think... Either would have been a good choice, but Padme would have been a better choice for this figure. 
Our next minifigure up is Elrond of Rivendell, and I think he's probably one of my favorite figures in the set. He is quite accurate, and I really have no complaints with him. Like, he has that hairpiece that we just mentioned, that new Elven one. He has a exclusive face print in this. I can guarantee that's going to be exclusive. It's like a nice stern face on this side, and it has his crown on the top. And if you flip it around, it also has his crown, and it's like a nice smile. I don't think I really see Elrond really smile, except at the end of the Return of the King, when El when Aragorn and, er and Arwen get back together. So, I really think that the I don't know why they included that face, because I don't see him smiling at Rivendell. He's always just a plain or mad expression, like a calm or mad expression. And the torso print is great on both sides. It looks really good there. And the the dress printing looks great as well. Taking a look at the old Elrond, however, I think it's just better. Although, I think that the they should have included like a, a cape like this. It is dual-sided. One side red, the other side like goldenish or tan, I guess. For, for my light, it looks tan, but for, on the camera, it kind of looks gold. And I gotta say, I think that the the cape just adds something, and then also the head. The head looks really like Elrond, in my opinion. Not more on this side, but more on this side. That looks like Elrond, in my opinion. And I think they should have just included a new mold, like this piece here, with the crown molded into it. I don't know why LEGO, like, LEGO cheaped out a little bit and gave us all the same thing for this, and it does not look too good for some of them, but... I don't know, I guess I really feel indifferent about this figure. It's a good figure, but if you have the old one, I would trade the I would trade those for the stuff on top. Our next main figure up is Boromir, and he is great. Looking at him, he has a new sword element for the Sword of Gondor. That is very accurate to what he wields in the movies. And a new printed shield here, which is exclusive to the set. It has the design that he wielded. Lego tried to do this with a different type of shield element in the past. It did not look that good, but Lego really perfected it on this. Moving his shield, we can see some nice torso and leg printing. And flipping him around and lifting up that cape, we can see some more back printing that is great. And I gotta say, Boromir, no offense to him, but he's not my favorite character in the movie. But I gotta say, Lego did do him justice. I gotta say, they really went the extra mile for this, giving us waist printing, leg printing all new torso printing like every every piece on this figure except for the hair is exclusive to this set and i love that about him also something funny about him is this head it's the it's the one from the iconic it, one doesn't simply walk into mordor meme and i think that is hilarious it's just a nice smiling look and i think that is hilarious flipping it around though we can see a nice calm stern expression and i think overall this is just like not just overall but Pretty much, this is. There's nothing you could ask for to improve this figure. Our next minifigure is Legolas, and I gotta say, he really looks good. And, well, somewhat. Looking at him, he has the elvish hairpiece I said, but in blonde. It is the same mold, just different colors of the rubberized plastic here. And I gotta say, for Legolas, it really does not work. Like,. If you look in the movies, he has, like, a couple pieces of hair coming down in the front in some scenes. But in Rivendell, like, I think it is not good. I'll take a look at the old Legolas and I'll show you something. But, yeah. Anyway, looking at it, he has the bow that was for the, uh, it was in the Brickheads for Legolas. And if you just look at the Brickheads, like, I'm not going to show it here because, uh, I don't have it easily accessible. And, uh... It is the same bow here. It is like the fancy elvish one, and that is pretty cool. Looking at it, though, the head does not look like Legolas, though. That, yeah, that's just not Legolas. But looking at the torso, though, the torso is great. And lifting up the, up the headpiece there, we can see that the back printing is great also. And the legs, if you could notice, they are dual molded for his boots. And I think that is quite good. Lego halfway went the extra mile. They They went about as far as they were like... Yeah, we'll just give him dual mold legs. They'll be fine with that. No. But now, let me show you him next to the old Legolas. Looking at the old Legolas, he's really not that bad compared to this one. Now, on, obviously, like there are some differences. Like this one, he has blue on his bottom and, and set and, uh, on his legs, I mean. And this one, it has gray legs and leg printing. And I gotta say, I think that this one, it includes more detail. But for this one, it's just... Like, you can see the... The printing there, it's just, it's okay, but 
really, in my opinion, I think that the head and hair for this just scream Legolas, and they do. So, I think what Lego should have done is they should have given, like, if you get this figure, I th I think you should get, you should swap these two. Like, swap the head and hair of this and swap it for that. Because, in my opinion, that just, that just looks so much more like Legolas than what Lego did for this. Our next main figure up is Gimli, and I think he looks incredible. Look at him, though. We can see a nice helmet here, and it is... It is definitely it is a different mold from the one back in the day. Although I think the one back in the day was a little bit better. Those these little these the shield pieces that are kind of printed on on the back they were actually uh, molded into the thing. So I kind of like that better. But one thing I do like better is the gold printing on the top here. In a second, I'll show you the old Gimli and we'll be able to see the difference of the helmets. But taking that off, we can see a nice face here. We can remove that and see a nice smile. And then flipping it around, there's actually nothing. And also on the, I was, I mentioned earlier about Pippin's torso being in, in a promo. They actually used Gimli's head on that torso for the promo. So that was, uh, I gotta say, after just building this set, that was kind of weird in my opinion. But yeah. But anyway, removing this helmet again, we can see that he has a new beard element introduced just in this set. It was not the same as the old one. And it is actually slightly rubberized somewhat. And you can see that it is a shorter and slimmer braid than last year. And, well, no, like the last time we got this minifig. And there it is. Uh, you can actually take his hairpiece this time and put it on him. The old Gimli, you did not have that ability to do. And you can see his beard poking in through the bottom of this. And I think that looks great. I think having this off for the council scene just looks fantastic. And couldn't ask for anything more. His torso printing is nothing too special. We can remove these pieces. He has uh, guards and, and uh, stuff and other stuff and shields, protection, I guess. And I love this. It's just a great minifigure. And now he has the short mini legs and, and brown, and that is great. Now, the main thing that you've all been wanting me to talk about, the axes. I think these are great elements here. You actually get four of them in this set. Two of them you actually put later in the forge, and then two you give to Gimli. I think that is great. They look so accurate to the axis he wields in Rivendell. And of course, these are also part of the new weapons pack that is exclusive to this set. All new weapons made for Lord of the Rings. And I just love it so much. I gotta say, all the weapons in this set are top-notch. I do love that, and it is great. And what you can also do is you can make it where he's holding the axe like this to where, like, like he's like, and you have my axe. And he's telling Frodo that he's gonna go with him on the quest where you can just hold it at the top of the axe there, where, like, he's on top of the axe, and I think that looks great. And now, let's take a look at the old Gimli. Looking at the old Gimli, he's pretty much the same, except he has, like, a bigger beard so that you can't see as much of the torso print, which is pretty much the same printing. I'm not going to really go into that. And you can see the braid is a lot bigger than the last time. So, the helmets here, let's look at the... Uh, let's take a look at the helmets. <laughs> Looking at them, you can see the gold printing is better on this one. But you can also see that this, the new helmet is, like, shorter. And I just think it's really smaller than the old one. And, like, the printing, too, it's... You can see that the on the old one, it was just bigger. And you can see that those pieces at the back were molded. And uh, these are not. But what I found out is you can actually just take the old helmet and put it on the new Gimli. And... I gotta say, I think that actually kind of looks better. I think that's probably the best combo for this minifigure. Because also, if because also like the back here, it's just straight. But the back of the new helmet, it goes up. And I'm, I'm really on a rant here. I've been going for too long. But yeah, that's Gimli. And I think that, I, I gotta say, overall, the new one's better. But the old one, it did have some good redeeming qualities. Next up, we have Gimli's father, Gloin. Look at him. He has the midi short uh, gray legs. He has the Dumbledore hairpiece. And his head is actually a reuse from probably Harry Potter. And Lego, actually, the only new piece in this set is this beard element, which they use the same mold for Gimli and him, but just different colors. Also rubberized, so that you can also have this on the back. And if you wanted to, you could take Gimli's helmet and put it on here, although I don't know why you would do that. But if you wanted to, you could. But anyway, look at it. We can see that. Um, um, and also, I mentioned that the the beard is the only uh, exclusive piece in this. And that's because the torso is Owen Grady's. That is quite a wild combination. But the part where I get buttons up is covered by the beard. So I got to say, for, for the glowing, like, 
like all they had to do was just make a new piece for its for that and then just throw in a couple reuse parts so i'm perfectly fine with get with getting glowing this way i think he still looks good although they probably could have uh a little i would have liked a different torso print but i think what they gave us is probably as good as we're gonna get lastly we have two elvin smiths they look great i really gotta say and yeah let's get into it Looking at the torsos, they have the same torso print, removing the new elvish hairpiece we can see on the back. They have a nice more printing for their belts, and they use generic faces, but for these minifigures, I gotta say, LEGO did not have to include these at all. When I saw these were in the set, I really did not expect that, because they really not in the scene, except, like, of course, uh, there is a forge in this set to represent whenever they're reforging Aragorn's sword, which I, I don't really remember how to say its name. I think it's Elendio. Correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am. But anyway, just looking at it, we can see that the that the woman elf, the female elf, she has uh, some dress printing, which I don't know why they went and gave her dress printing on the back too. I mean, dress printing on the front, that's probably good. But on the back, I gotta say, I don't know why they gave us that. But overall, I think these two minifigures are acceptable and the, the, the hair pieces on them, I think that's okay. I think that the hair pieces on them, because they're just random elves, I think that is perfectly acceptable here. Like, honestly, Air, like Legolas is the only elf that they should have had a new mold for, so, yeah. I really don't like that, but hey, these minifigures are good, and that's the wrap for all the minifigures. Our first section of Rivendell we're going to look at is the left section, and this, of course, is, like, a little library down here and Bilbo's bedroom, or in the location where Frodo wakes up. I'm pretty sure that's still just Bilbo's bedroom. But nonetheless, we're going to look at the outside first. We're going to work our way uh, uh, bottom to top, so let's get into it. On the bottom here, we have some greenery and some other plant elements. And of course, this, is the, uh, this set introduced the new uh, fern element. As you can see, it just looks like a fern. Uh, this piece has been... Uh, this, this set introduced it, and it has been in countless sets... I'd say probably uh, at least 50 by now, but that piece was introduced just for this set. There are 34 in this set. That is pretty sick. Then down here, we also have a little piece right here, and um, there's something about that that I'm going to show you in just a second. But looking up here, we have all these minifigures up here as statues, and LEGO doesn't include them as minifigures, so I'm not going to show them, but uh, I will just show you the a brief synopsis. They have just regular gray legs, and they have different hair pieces, just this and uh, just that other hair piece, that regular Gandalf hair piece. And then we have a nice torso print there and a nice like smiley face over there well somewhat smiley face to the nice grin there and then over here we have just a nice stone face look and so these are used as just statues and they're not technically counted as minifigures but of course they are minifigures so lego does not include them as minifigures but I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure it's just because like they're built into the set so like that's probably why they're not counted but they are minifigures and looking up here we have some nice masonry up here with these bricks and we have different techniques to get this shape down we can lift this section off we'll actually look in there in a second but you can see that there is different like cheese slopes to keep this effect one thing i must mention here as you can see like there are no gaps in this although i do actually have one gap here that is because there's this piece right here this one by one piece that's like a uh little piece that goes down lego did not send me enough of them they sent they sent me one of these pieces instead so i already talked to talk to lego and um i think i'm gonna be sent that piece but until then i'm gonna have that tiny gap there so i just play regular stud there but whenever i get that piece i'm just gonna swap it out and it'll be good as new but i just want to let you know that so you're not like hey you built it wrong but yeah i i did not build it wrong i just uh i did not build it wrong i just uh did not have the pieces looking at it though we can see more uh, stonework built into the thing and uh we can see some moss creeping up onto it I, I guess you'd call that and then over here i love this section we have the entrance over here one of the many entrances into rivendell and i think it just looks great there are these nice arches up here and uh, anyway actually i'm gonna change the camera so we can get a better look at this now looking at this, we can see that we have these arches here, and they use nice techniques to get these 
in there, and I think they look incredible. They're actually technic into the walls here, and we have nice railing, and this is just one of our many entrances into Rivendell. You can take a minifigure and put him into there through that doorway if you want. I'm just going to grab one to show you. So you can see we have Gloin in there right now. He looks pretty nice. And flipping the model around, we can see into the library section here. I'm just going to remove Gloin. And over here, we have this little bed built in, and it's held on by a little translucent piece there. It's actually a pretty simple piece. It just uses, like, I'd say about, like, maybe 15, I'd say, around 15, 15 different pieces. And they're actually the same built. This is also built on the gazebo with Arwen, and we'll take a look at that later. But they are the same exact build, just this nice light blue, baby blue... I don't think that's sand blue, that's that color there. But like this nice this nice teal baby blue color that looks pretty nice. If you wanted to, there are no studs on it, but if you wanted to, you can place a minifigure on it. Like I got Gloin there and he, they they will fit nicely on it. And we can place our minifigure just in other places down here. Removing that bed though, we can see there are some nice light fixtures back there with some torches. And we have some masonry over there. That pillar goes all the way up into Bilbo's room. And over here, we have a bookshelf. Now, it's it's not really advertised as this, but I, you can, like, somewhat remove it. And there's, like, a little entrance behind it. I don't think that's really an intended play feature because I can't really do it. But, yeah, that's the bottom floor. And the last thing I'm going to show you is we have little technic holes here, and that's where it actually connects to the middle section of, Rivendu of Rivendell. And we'll take a look at that later. Our next section is the roof, and I think it looks beautiful. All the tiles, I must say, it was very tedious to build, but it's definitely better than I thought it was going to be. I I really was not looking forward to that, and I gotta say, it was not too much fun. <laughs> but, I gotta say, it ended up great, and I am so thankful that it did, because it looks amazing. The technique that LEGO uses to get everything at a 45 degree angle, I think that is spot on. Just sliding a plate in between these, and I really think it looks great. And then also at the sides, we have Technic pins throughout this to hold it into place, so you cannot lift this roof off. So, I gotta say, I really do like that about it, so that it's just more tight and a better connection. Looking at this side here, we have a railing over here, so that you can look in on Frodo and Bilbo's bedroom. And up here, we have this like little crow piece It's on a clip, and we have two of those in a set. The other is on the other side of Rivendell, like on the, on the other side of the roof, so that's nice. At the back here, getting into the interior, we have uh, this little painting here of Isildur and Sauron. I think that is just that is an incredible sticker. I love it so much. This is a, an incredible painting, and there's not much room in front of it, but if you wanted, you could place a minifigure. I'm just using Glowing because I have him on hand, but you could take Glowing, and you can put him just staring at the picture if you want, or if you wanted, you could put like a minifigure like in front of it like that but there's not really much there's only like one stud of clearance so it really or i guess if you wanted you could put them like on the side here staring at the picture but i don't think that's really ideal but i must say i love this section a lot and it really does look good moving into bilbo's room one thing last thing i want to show about the roof there's this little clip here that is actually so you can connect it onto the other part of rivendell but we'll take a look at that in a minute looking at the inside of bilbo's bedroom we're gonna i'm gonna change the camera angle so we can get a better look now looking into Bilbo's bedroom, I think it looks spectacular. We have some stickers here for his bedding, and on the back here we have our we have like this elven painting at the back, and that looks nice for his bed frame. And I gotta say, the way that they built this, I think it's just spot on. It looks beautiful. It's just a beautiful bed. We have a little tile here for Gandalf to sit on. And one thing I did not show is Lego actually included ways to seat minifigures, like, with dress people for the first time. This p piece here is a combination of a printed slope and a little thing here, so you can take Gandalf's legs off, like I've done, and you can click that onto there. And now he can sit at in the Council of Rivendell, and he can also sit right here. And Lego also did this for Frodo and Bilbo. They gave him them uh, head headlamp pieces, and uh, Bilbo's are in tan, and these are in uh, brown, light brown. So what you can do is you take off his legs, and now you just clip him on right so. And that looks nice. And now Bilbo, well, Frodo, he is seated, and now he's ready to talk to Gandalf after he's just woken up. Although I, I will put them back, but just removing those many figures, we can see that we have another light fixture in the back on the little table. And we have this little chest in the back, and if we open that up, we have little gifts inside. 
inside this chest we can find two important things in the trilogy. We can find Sting, Frodo's uh, sword that Bilbo gives him in this scene, and Frodo's mithril shirt that that Bilbo also gives him in this scene. Now it's a kind of tricky, so I'll just I'll just, just turn off the camera. Looking at this section, I'm just going to remove the roof here so that we can get some more light into there. And looking at it, I think it looks spectacular. We have a seat for Bilbo right here. It has some nice, um, I don't know, like nice blue here. That looks nice. And we can use the same technique for Bilbo with the headlamps. And he can be seated on his chair like so. He does, he does come off the chair just a little bit, but I'd say only like two studs worth, so... And really, the chair is not that big a deal, so I'm fine with that. Looking at the looking at the rest of his office, though, we can see that he has a little torch there and a little quill, and he actually has the book that he writes there and back again. You can see that little sticker there, and um, actually, I'm going to remove that to show you it. There we go. On the inside, it says there and back again. That is a sticker. There are actually not too many stickers in this set, but it is a pretty sizable one. It says there and back again right there. And then if you close that up, there's a sticker of the front of the cover with a nice star right there. And it also has a B on the bottom there for Bilbo Baggins. The last thing we'll be talking about is the tower piece here. You can actually just remove that very easily. It's uh, it's held on by a couple studs right there, and I think it's a pretty strong connection because you're not really going to be playing with it that much. It's just really a display piece, but it just come off really easily so you can see into Bilbo's studies, and I think that looks great. Now, looking at the rest of this, though, we have some nice uh, tiles here coming around, some pointed and curvature elements. I don't like that you can see some of, this from some of the studs underneath this, though. That's probably my one grip about this tower. The rest of this is fine. We have these big dome pieces that they use on, like, a AATs from Star Wars. And we have some more curvature elements. And then they use some cool techniques to get this... Uh, well, it's easier to come off than it looked, but... Anyway, the, um, we have nice uh, brick elements here. If you can see, like, they're a different combination of different pieces to get this nice place. And theoretically, you could probably fit a minifigure inside here. But if you did, I don't think you'd really be able to get it out. Like, let me see if I can get going in there for you all. Um, uh, yeah, I, um, I can somewhat get them in, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get them out that easy. There we go. I got them out, but uh, I would really not re recommend putting a minifigure in there because it's just really going to be a hassle to get him out. Now, looking at the rest of it, though, we can see a nice car element on the top there that looks nice. And some more curvature and angled pieces there. And on the top, we end off with a nice gold point, and that looks great. Now we get on to my favorite section of Rivendell, the Forge of Rivendell. Looking at this, we can see the bridge that Aragorn and Arwen are on. I think that's super cool. We can see some water elements going down and some more rocky work at the below. At the back, we can see some more rock work and some nice translucent pieces for water. Here we have some stairs leading up to the gazebo, which we'll take a look at in a minute, and some stairs leading down to the forge. Looking at this, we can see some nice glow-in-the-dark fungus, as well as another fern element and, and the base of the tree. Looking at the forge here, we can see a nice barrel with some tools as well as an anvil where they're reforging the sword for Aragorn. Now we go on to the trees, and I think they look beautiful. They're just spectacular. Now we go on to the gazebo, which looks beautiful from every angle. We have nice life preservers on the top, and even on the side, we can see that bench that was in the library. And just on the bottom, you can see that this piece is a technic masterpiece. Also, we can lift this up and go into the forge now. Looking at the forge, we can see some weapons rack with Aragorn's sword, Gimli's axe, and some nice elven swords, which I love. We have a stone grinder there, and we have a, an extra Frodo sword. We can see a nice lantern on the wall, and sorry, th that sword's name is Sting, my bad. And now, looking at the next section, we can see some just random weapons, like and on the back we can see a nice frog element, that looks nice. Now we can take a look at the main section of Rivendell, and I just love it, gotta say, this thing is really beautiful, and let's just dive into it. Looking at this, we can see a little gazebo right there. It looks nice. And now we can see a little table with lamb bread right here. And going at the back, we can see a little bench for Bilbo to sit. And now going up, we can see a tiny tree going up to a big tree. And I just got to say, it really looks good. I, I just love the techniques here. Now looking at the back, we can see a map of Mordor. And looking at it, it just looks beautiful. You can, you can pause and look at it if you want. And we have some stairs leading up to a different section, which we'll look at later. Now looking at this, we have a map of I do not know. And you can just see some tables in the back and all those tiles I was talking about. Now looking at this side, and we can see some nice architecture for the base of this. And we can see all those tiles I was talking about. 
and just looking at them, they look great. Over there is a map of Mordor, as long as a Camdelabra, and we can see a nice elven telescope there, it looks nice. And then we have some stairs leading up to another area of Rivendell. We have a nice painting of a some city, and then we also have a painting of an elven ship, that's pretty cool. Now we ha go on to the section with the sword Narsil, which has r enough room to place Aragorn as well as Boromir. Now we can see a little railing coming from Bilbo's room, as long as a sticker with the, the forging of the rings, which I think is so, so neat, and I'm glad they included that there. Now we go on to the council ring, and this just looks great in my opinion. What you can do is you can actually remove the tree, and underneath is the Eye of Sauron. I love that little Easter egg, and it's just so glad they included it there. Going on to the council, we can see that it's empty. But I just love all the new pieces that they included here, like the hot dog and the popsicle the piece. We can see those tiles being used. And also in the middle, those pieces, they're, they're actually from Minecraft. Now, whenever we fill it up with minifigures, also, I don't know if it's the right location of the minifigures, so pardon that. But I think it just looks good with minifigures in here. It really does. It just captures the essence of this iconic scene. And I gotta say, there's really nothing else I'd like. Looking at the roof, though, we can see the nice tile design from last time. And we can see some more of that going through here, and that just looks great. And the last piece is, the last section here is a little tower, like the one from the other section, the first section we saw. And there's also that little bird, like I said, would be at this end section, so that's pretty neat. Looking at the top of the tree, that really does look good. Now, it's time to wrap up this review, so I hope you all enjoyed.